In wooey areas, the combination of natural and urban fuels that collectively burn leads to different types of pollutants not typically found in traditional wildland fires in the form of atmospheric emissions, residues, and effluents, or liquid waste. All wildfires produce smoke and a large mix of pollutants. Particulate matter, or PM, is the most prominent. It is emitted in the highest amounts and has been directly linked to respiratory disease and premature death. In addition, wildfires emit smoke consisting of a range of different compounds, including volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, and semi-volatile organic compounds, or SVOCs. These emissions represent a vast array of chemicals, some of which are acutely toxic, some are irritants, and some are known carcinogens. All of these compounds are emitted from natural vegetation like trees, shrubs, and grasses when they burn. But when a wildfire spreads to include the urban fuels we just discussed, we expect to find an entirely different set of pollutants being released or admitted because these fuels are chemically very different from the trees and shrubs that are burning in a normal wildfire. The built environment contains things like different types of metals, PVC, which has chlorine in it, compounds with high nitrogen content like nylon, or the glues and manufactured woods can generate cyanates to be emitted from those fires. We say expect to find because there's limited research on wooey fire emissions. Wildfire emissions don't just impact the local community. They can impact large areas of the United States as well as the globe, ultimately impacting millions of people. Here is a fire and smoke map from the EPA's Air Now page. The circles indicate permanent particulate matter monitors, and the triangles and squares indicate low-cost or temporary ones. The color of each sensor indicates the air quality from hazardous to good. Purple, crimson, red, orange, and yellow dots indicate areas on the ground where there are high concentrations of smoke. The gray shaded areas indicate the smoke plumes. Notice how they cover almost the entire United States for this particular day, demonstrating that emissions can impact very large areas beyond a fire source. Here is a view from a different day. While emissions from wooey fires vary depending on the type and amount of urban fuel, Weather conditions also play a key role in how far wildfire smoke will travel. Once the emissions are put into the atmosphere near the fire, they immediately cool and change through a process called atmospheric transformation. The entire plume will evolve over time and change its chemical nature. Initially, gas-based compounds will start to condense onto particles. More reactive compounds will start to react with other atmospheric compounds and turn into new compounds. Moving 10 to hundreds of miles downwind, there are slower processes that continue to occur. Large particles will start to fall out of that plume in the form of ash that is often seen falling out of the sky. Atmospheric chemistry will also continue as the plume emissions mix with other pollutants that may be emitted from cars and trucks and industrial processes. The sunlight will also drive chemical reactions within the plume, causing photochemical reactions. Depending on proximity to the fire, individuals may be exposed to emissions in different ways, through inhalation, through ingestion of ash, for example, and through dermal absorption. The health effects from the different components of the plume are relatively unknown. While we do have some understanding of immediate or near-field exposure to fresh emissions, we are at the infancy of our understanding of regional and continental exposure to the transformed wooey plume. However, we do know that wooey fires may lead to higher human exposures than wildland fires because of their proximity to communities, and some areas of the United States can be impacted by multiple fires at the same time causing exposure to smoke from fires for days, weeks, or even months at a time. We also know that certain members of the population, children and pregnant women, for example, may be more vulnerable than others. Since wooey fires cannot be left to naturally burn out, the individuals who work near them, 
such as firefighters, emergency response teams, and cleanup recovery crews, are increasingly being exposed to WUI-type fires. Additionally, outdoor workers in surrounding areas, such as farmers and landscapers, may be at greater risk. To learn more and stay up to date on our work, visit our website. Chemical Insights. Science for a safer, healthier tomorrow.